come up with a little bit more. We need this moment to do this and this. And this moment, this minute suffers the most from Brent's reaction <laughs> because there's nothing to it. He is our, he's our eyes into the story. He is what we kept saying zero was in the last film where she was the humanity. Brent has to be our humanity here. And we are seeing what happens to society when we allow war to go beyond control. And he doesn't, he doesn't convey that. We, we get, um, at, at 10 seconds in, we get the Mendez reveal. We get him to turn around. We then get a quick cut to all four of the major leaders, Albina, Fat Man, Caspe, and Angero. And then at 16 seconds in, we finally get another shot of Brent. And he's just kind of, he starts to kind of turn his head away as in dif- disbelief. But it's not really the, still not the moment that I wanted to get yes. from him, the power that I wanted this, this reveal to mean. If you want this to be the moment that is at least equal to the Statue of Liberty from the first film, it's got to have that continued escalation. Why don't we see the children here? Why aren't the children with the adults? How powerful would that have been if Brent oh, looked then, over and wow, there's an adult yeah. peeling one of the children's <laughs> faces, faces off? off yeah. that, you want to talk about shocking. If we saw a parent peeling a, a, fa- a, ch- a child's Kids face off, up. oh my God, that's that'll love you. So and That may have been too much. The censors might have said that's too much. That may be why they didn't. So... At at eighteen seconds in, the 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 uh, organist starts back up again, which is to your point, the the gloves. We mm-hmm. get a shot of him as he's there. I had not noticed before, but there's all these crystals on the organ behind him, right? Oh, at yeah. first, I thought it was like a crumpled up piece oh, of paper, yeah. but behind the the uh, Psalm of Mendez two or three that's on the on the board, there's some crystals behind him on the organ, kind of beginning to connect this idea that there is something futuristic about the society, but something mm-hmm. also kind of um, old about the society using the old organ. And then they just kind of launch back into song again now that they reveal their inmost self. And the the rest of this minute is just kind of made up of more song. And if you listen to the words, there wasn't really anything that kind of brought the power of this moment until we get to the very end of this of the words. The words are all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful. The good bomb made us all. Okay, so there's a reference that they feel like their origin I like that is that rhymes so well. The, yeah. the origin of the bomb. He gave us eyes to see with and lips that we might tell how great the bomb almighty. So we're now getting the sense that this mutation, if you hadn't gathered it before, might have come from some type of original bomb. And they see the bomb as their creation. The bomb is their God. We kind of got the sense before, but this with the mutation kind of drives home that that's where they they feel their origin stems from. I never really thought about this until you started illuminating between the organist to the singing to whatever. I wonder if what this scene really needs is for Mendez to really, really be the leader. They recently did a uh, Waco on Paramount TV, which was a really good uh, telling of the David Koresh story and how a, a magnanimous leader can take people down a very dark path. What if, what if, and this is nothing more than conjecture, Mendez goes over and there's a book that's completely encrusted from the fallout and he actually cracks it and begins to say the prophecy has told us a day would come when we would have to again cleanse. That it's almost now you've put fear like Brent knows, oh shit, this is about to go down. At least at that point, if he's like a David Koresh kind of cult leader now and they're all chaining along with it, it's terrifying because there's nothing he can do to control that. Yeah. It just never feels like that they understand that they have to turn the extra page. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, you're, you're right. There, there is a moment here rather than the choir coming back and singing again where it would have nice to actually have Mendez kind of lead them further down this path. I mean, this isn't exactly a, um, uh, a, powerful speaker they didn't hire an actor necessarily that a charismatic, was, or speaker, charismatic yeah. speaker charismatic yeah. speaker they didn't give him or they didn't give him the direction to be so right but it would have been nice to see him motivate all of these people for the coming minutes in this moment talking about their mission and who they are right we hear it in the song and to your points from the minute before you kind of gloss you, over the song you might not have heard any of those lyrics no and and i it's funny as i went on i guess last friday about the musicality and what they're doing how excited i was it borderline ruins what they're saying because you don't hear it. You can't hear it. I, our brains operate so much on tonality. Even when I'm speaking right now, there's a tonality to it that helps you understand what I'm saying. And I think in this, it masks entirely what they're saying because I watch, I I'm sure like you guys, when we take minute notes, I watch them two and three, four, five times, whatever I need to, to get through it. What I want to observe. I never once really paid attention 
to the depth of what they're saying. And I wish I had. So the, we're about 25 seconds, 30 seconds into it for the start of the singing. We've moved off the organist. We now have all five leaders um, with Mendez centered have kind of risen to a place side by side, like mirroring the way they were above in the station over Brent. And they've got the bomb kind of placed precariously behind them. I love how Mendez is slightly offset. So it doesn't just like the bomb is coming out of his head. head. Yeah. 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 What I also found interesting to add a next, another level of horror to what we're witnessing is that all of them, including the congregation are holding their human masks in their hands, kind of off to their left. They're, they're, they're hoisting it up almost to their left breast as opposed to having it down below. And Mm. even when you go to the congregation and they have their book singing, they're also still holding their masks to their left upright so that we as an audience can see them in more horror. They should have their fingers through the eye holes. And just, <laughs> <laughs> they should be mouthing their mouthing puppet masks. <laughs> they cut over to a little kid and they're turning it into all kinds they're of They're making shit. them kiss each other. <laughs> yeah. So there was one other thing that I, I thought interesting. Um, and it's at, it's right at the 30 second mark. We get a shot back now that all four leaders are standing up in front of them. And we get a shot of the congregation. The pews that Angero and um, Caspe and Albina and Fat Men were sitting in have cushions in them. They have a cushion pad at the top of the pew and a cushion pad seated where they are, where I don't necessarily see it in the pews that Brent and Nova and everybody else are sitting in. They have cushion seats. If you notice, <clears throat> the cushions colors correspond to each of their outfits colors. So Angero's cushions were yellow. Caspe's were green. And Albina's was a blue color. Now, we don't actually get to see Fat Man's cushions, but we could probably assume that they're red. And you got to assume that they're bigger the cushion, the easier the cushion. (laughs) Well, I I wanted to know that, as you said that, I'd never thought about it, but now, okay, their innermost self is the irradiated, veiny, whatever, do they have hemorrhoids, and that's why they're having to sit on cute <laughs> the, cushions and whatnot to the, to cushion the blow of sitting on a hard seat? I why why do they get cushiony? Why? But I I love that the cushion. I was like, why are those brightly colored in this room that doesn't have a lot of brightly lit colors except yeah. for the crystals that that Mendez used earlier? And then I realized they correspond to the colors of the robes, whatever their whatever their designate of of authority was. And, that's what the colors were for the cushions. And am I crazy, or do the guards not take their masks off? Ooh, oh, I, I didn't know. The guards that. did not take their masks yeah, off. Yeah, so no. like they're they don't change in front the, of their god. They, maybe they don't have an innermost self. Yeah, that's it. They're the non mutated ones. I kept wishing that, and, and I know I'm clamoring for all this other religious significance, but an offering plate. Why weren't offering plates put <laughs> and they put the masks in them or something? Because I did, I did notice everyone's holding it, and I kept thinking that's just kind of weird that you would hold that why aren't we casting them aside it, and that takes further the the, the si- significance of it revealing yourself when you cast aside so we're, we're in a situation where they said they wanted to um uh where is it they wanted to i was in the minute before where they're talking about the specifically the christian ceremony um as a degradation to which the christian ritual has fallen and I kind of wonder if they were maybe afraid of making too many similarities. It could we, be. We already have the we already had the apes on the inverted cross outside. Mm-hmm. We've already got this situation with kind of this uh, uh, odd, unusual choir song and the reveal of the masks and the bomb that is now being worshipped as the uh, you know as the as the as the crucifixion up above. And I just kind of wonder if they maybe were afraid. Maybe they didn't want to take it too far by to offend people. I mean, were people at the time offended by this display? Okay. So at that time, would it have been too much instead of pulling from Judeo-Christian beliefs to have gone to Muslim beliefs and gone to the kneeling that that occurs when they pray? Could you not have that imagery wasn't as well known in 1970s to the American culture? Could you not put something like that in so that it felt incredibly foreign? I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. But I don't think that the audience would have picked up on what it was at the time. I mean, God. they were. It just seems like you could have found something, but. I mean, the, again, this, they were 100% right to think, wow, what if we have a mutated human race that lives beneath the crust of the earth? That's a cool idea. They considers this heaven. Yes, it's all very <clears throat> cool. It's just that you wish that they had been given the time to explore a little bit more so they could have had a little more reasoning. Because even in the minutes that are coming, there are moments where you go, um, wait, hang on. 
you you said something here and it doesn't pay off here. And I, I'm only alluding to that when we get to it. It's more when Andro is talking to Brent in later minutes. And there the, are things that, that, that the reasoning and what occurs, it, it just feels like everything again is rushed. Well, they're using the song to tell their story and their origin, which m- might have been good, but might, especially might, in a musical, but not not in this. It's lost in the situation. So, I think they got on the Hello Dolly set. And they said, <laughs> let's make it into a musical. So 40, 40 seconds in. Uh, we're still singing the choir and we finally get another shot of Brent and Nova and Brent is just kind of got his, he has his eyes kind of averted as if he's looking in horror down at the ground. Like you can't look at these mutants mm-hmm. again, not the response that I wanted. And we finally have Nova kind of looking at them and she's just looking at them like they're kind of queer. She's like, Hmm. Yeah. Strange. That's odd. Again, I think if anything, Nova should be the one that is completely freaked out by this. It would have been a, it, 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 tell me the, 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 the power of the scene. If she had freaked out and started to get up to move, to run out of the yes. thing, and, the and he had to grab her and the guards had to pull them back and force them back in their seats. How many times, you know, if you ever look at a scene in a bad film, and I'm not equating this to a bad film, but it's a bad film. The dramatic nature of you always want to be dramatic and overreact. A director have to, has to come in and go tone it down. it down a little bit. You 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 make the smallest of grand gestures. It plays bigger than making the grandest of gestures. Right? He could have had a moment where that's why I'm you know the, going back to it. She reacts so horrifically that he pulls her in to protect her and that says everything but instead she's left to look like a moron like none of it matters and when when none of it matters to the humanity of the story none of it matters to us now we go back to the 70s i think people were shocked i think that though it does not resonate entirely we understood the first film and the significance of the statue of liberty because of what heston did in that moment because he's damn you damn you he's pounding the earth there's nothing here what, what we, we talked about when we, when the uh, guerrilla soldiers and Ursus and Zaius were outside and they encountered the vision and they encountered the lawgiver and they were talking about how, um, you know, they were kind of just out in a field with three days. They had to shoot this and it looked like they kind of didn't know what they were doing and they just kind of make it happen. This congregation scene is the opposite. It looked like they actually had time to plan this out right. and spend some time. Now, granted, you don't have the chaos of moving horses and moving uh, gorillas outside. You can have people stand and rise, but it felt like, it felt like more organized, like they had they had the time to spend breaking down this scene a little bit better if they wanted to. It is at the 45 second that we do get a shot of the congregation that I was talking about where it's lit in such a way that makes me think that sunlight was actually coming through and shining down on them. Okay, I can but, see I mean, that. It there's may just, there's, there's like very a, much a source of the light. There's like a dusty yep. haze that just kind of looks like sunlight has come through. So when I saw the scene, I actually thought, God is shining down on them. And I was like, do they have an exterior light? Like, what are they getting? Where, they, where is the sun light coming from? Is it coming from an outside source? I wonder how they would react to sun. Are they so have thin they, skinned? Have they ever gone outside? Right. Yeah. Is it to know. that point? You know, most of the troglodyte type thing where they're below the, the, the light earth. burns my eyes. Well, I mean, the, all that kind of stuff could have been cool. And it, it really makes me wonder because even with what you've read in the script, there's enough there that you would think the majority of actors are going to go to the director and, you know, Francis is going to go to post and say, I really think that I should be horrified and, and you should hold me back. And did right. he, did, was it that they didn't have the time to explore that from a dramatic sense? Or was it that post said, Nope, I disagree with you. I think that you should be so cool. And you, you're just trying to figure out, was it, was it poor direction? Was it lack of time? I'm beyond curious. The world may never know. They, they did a, um, they did a good job of, of, packing this cathedral with a lot of people they did. there was a lot of congregations and a lot of good mass a lot of singers the script direction uh lets us know that there's supposed to be 300 singers the joy of the 300 short. mutant singers increases during an organ intermezzo between stanzas <sighs> once again it's a minute that has so much potential so I said, if there's supposed to be 300 people is that all the people that there are 300 plus however many kids there are well you know, we we look at what Ape City is, and even though we've seen it escalate in size due to the guerrilla army, it's always looked like it was relatively small. Well, yeah. And so maybe society at this time has not. Oh, if you're mutated, can you procreate? How? how wait, how? Are, they have children. Yeah. Ooh. Well, they have, well, they have children that they have. Well, they have dynasty. I mean, Mendez is Mendez oh, yeah, number true. we got all eight hundred or whatever his number is. <laughs> but we would know that if we hadn't read it in the script. All right. We get to the end of the minute. I actually love the final kind of shot of the choir. We get to see them sing, and it's a, it's kind of a tide on about you know twenty people, 
And I just love – it is kind of a horrific moment watching them all sing. At- and, and that that shot you're showing me, Richard, and, and to describe to the listener, this is when it goes to the people singing. It, it probably – you know, it's a rather wide shot, probably about 10 people across, 15 – I'm going to say 10 people deep. But it makes it look like 